Hello, and welcome to another episode of Reading Rainbow. I'm your host, Randall Fields, where reading is fundamental, and this is your brain on reading. So um, today, we're going to be doing part two to Aesop's Fable, and I'm going to continue where I left off. Okay, so you got something in a way there. It says three minutes today. I don't know if I can take that off, so sorry. But sit down, relax, and I'll cut the cake. The Crow and the Pitcher A thirsty crow found a pitcher with some water in it, but so little was there that, try as she might, she could not reach it with her beak and it seemed as though she would die of thirst within the sight of the remedy. At last, she hit upon a clever plan. She began dropping pebbles into the pitcher, and with each pebble the water rose a little higher, until at last it reached the brim, and the knowing bird was enabled to quench her thirst. Necessity is the mother of invention. The Boys and the Frogs Some mischievous boys were playing on the edge of a pond, and catching sight of some frogs swimming about in the shallow water, they began to amuse themselves by pelting them with stones, and they killed several of them. At last, one of the frogs put his head out of the water and said, Oh, stop, stop, I beg of you. What is sport to you is death to us. The North Wind and the Sun A dispute arose between the North Wind and the Sun, each claiming that he was stronger than the other. At last, they agreed to try their powers upon a traveler, to see which one could soonest strip him of his cloak. The north wind had the first to try, and gathering up all his force for the attack, he came whirling furiously down upon the man, and caught up his cloak as though he would wrest it away from him by one single effort. But the harder he blew, the more closely the man wrapped it around himself. Then came the turn of the sun. At first he beamed gently upon the traveler, who soon unclasped his cloak and walked on with it hanging loosely about his shoulders. Then he shone forth in his full strength, and the man, before he had gone many steps, was glad to throw his cloak right off and complete his journey more lightly clad. Persuasion is better than force. The Mistress and Her Servants A widow, thriftly and industrious, had two servants, whom she kept pretty hard at work. They were not allowed to lie long abed in the mornings, but the old lady had them up and doing as soon as the cock crew. They disliked intensely having to get up at such an hour, especially in winter time, and they thought that if it were not for the cock waking up their mistress so horribly early, they could sleep longer. So they caught it and wrung its neck, but they weren't prepared for the consequences. For what happened was that their mistress, not hearing the cock crow as usual, waked them up earlier than ever and set them to work in the middle of the night. The Goods and the Ills There was a time in the youth of the world when goods and ills entered equally and into the concerns of men, so that the goods did not prevail to make them altogether blessed, nor the ills to make them wholly miserable. But owing to the foolishness of mankind, the ills multiplied greatly in number and increased in strength, 
until it seemed as though they would deprive the goods of all share in human affairs and banish them from the earth. The latter therefore betook themselves to heaven and complained to Jupiter of the treatment they had received, at the same time praying him to grant them protection from the ills and to advise them concerning the manner of their intercourse with men. Jupiter granted their request for protection and decreed that for the future they should not go among men openly in a body and so be liable to attack from the hostile ills, but singly and unobserved and at infrequent and unexpected intervals. Hence, it is that the earth is full of ills, for they come and go as they please and are never far away. While goods, alas, come one by one only and have to travel all the way from heaven, so that they are very seldom seen. The Hares and the Frogs The Hares once gathered together and lamented the unhappiness of their lot. Exposed as they were to dangers on all sides, and lacking the strength and the courage to hold their own, Men, dogs, birds, and beasts of prey were all their enemies, and killed and devoured them daily. And sooner than endure such persecution any longer, they one and all determined to end their miserable lives. Thus resolved and desperate, they rushed in a body towards a neighboring pool, intending to drown themselves. On the bank were sitting a number of frogs, who, when they heard the noise of the hares as they ran, with one accord leaped into the water and hid themselves in the depths. Then one of the older hares, who was wiser, then the rest cried out to his companions, Stop, my friends. Take heart. Don't let us destroy ourselves after all. See, here are creatures who are afraid of us, and who must, therefore, be still more timid than ourselves. The Fox and the Stork A fox invited a stork to dinner, at which the only fare provided was a large, flat dish of soup. The fox lapped it up with great relish. But the stork, with her long bill, tried in vain to partake of the savory broth. Her evident distress caused the sly fox much amusement. But not long after, the stork invited him in turn and set before him a pitcher with a long and narrow neck, into which she could get her bill with ease. Thus, while she enjoyed her dinner, the fox sat by hungry and helpless, for it was impossible for him to reach the tempting contents of the vessel. The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing A wolf resolved to disguise himself in order that he might prey upon a flock of sheep without fear of detection. So he clothed himself in a sheepskin and slipped among the sheep when they were out at pasture. He completely deceived the shepherd, and when the flock was penned for the night, he was shut in with the rest. But that very night as it happened, the shepherd requiring a supply of mutton for the table laid hands on the wolf in mistake for a sheep and killed him with his knife on the spot. It seems like the hunter was going to kill the sheep also because he was hungry. The Stag in the Ox Stall A stag chased from her, his lair by the hounds 
took refuge in a farmyard, and entering a stable where a number of oxen were stalled, thrust himself under a pile of hay in a vacant stall, where he lay concealed, all but the tips of his horns. Presently, one of the oxen said to him, What has induced you to come in here? Aren't you aware of the risk you are running of being captured by the herdsmen? To which he replied, Pray, let me stay for the present. When night comes, I shall easily escape under cover of the dark. In the course of the afternoon, more than one of the farmhands came in to attend to the wants of the cattle, but not one of them noticed the presence of the stag, who accordingly began to congratulate himself on his escape and to express his gratitude to the oxen. We wish you well, said the one who had spoken before, but you are not out of danger yet. If the master comes, you will certainly be found, for nothing ever escapes his keen eyes. Presently, sure enough, in he came and made a great to-do about the way the oxen were kept. The beasts are starving, he cried. Here, give them more hay and put plenty of litter under them. As he spoke, he seized an armful himself from the pile where the stag lay concealed, and at once detected him. Calling his men, he had him seized at once and killed for the table. The Milkmaid and Her Pail A farmer's daughter had been out to milk the cows and was returning to the dairy carrying her pail of milk upon her head. As she walked along, she fell, amusing after this fashion. The milk in this pail will provide me with cream, which I will make into butter and take to market to sell. With the money I will buy a number of eggs and these, when hatched, will produce chickens, and by and by I shall have quite a large poultry yard. Then I shall sell some of my fowls, and with the money which they will bring in, I will buy myself a new gown, which I shall wear when I go to the fair. And all the young fellows will admire it, and come and make love to me but I shall toss my head and have nothing to say to them. Forgetting all about the pail and suiting the action to the word, she tossed her head. Down went the pail. All the milk was spilled, and all her fine castles in the air vanished in a moment. Do not count your chickens before they are hatched. The Dolphins, the Whales, and the Sprat The Dolphins quarreled with the Whales, and before very long they began fighting with one another. The battle was very fierce and had lasted some time without any sign of coming to an end. When a Sprat thought that perhaps he could stop it, so he stepped in and tried to persuade them to give up fighting and make friends. But one of the dolphins said to him, contemptuously, We would rather go on fighting till we're all killed than be reconciled by a sprat like you. <laughs> the Fox and the Monkey A fox and a monkey were on the road together and fell into a dispute as to which of the two was the better born. They kept it up for some time, till they came to a place where the road passed through a cemetery full of monuments. When the monkey stopped and looked about him and gave a great sigh. Why do you sigh? said the fox. 
The monkey pointed to the tombs and replied, All the monuments that you see here were put up in honor of my forefathers, who in their day were eminent men. The fox was speechless for a moment, but quickly recovering, he said, Oh, I don't stop at any lie, sir. You're quite safe. I'm sure none of your ancestors will rise up and expose you. Boasters brag most when they cannot be detected. The Ass and a Lapdog There was once a man who had an ass and a lapdog. The ass was housed in the stable with plenty of oats and hay to eat and was as well off as an ass could be. The little dog was made a great pet of by his master, who fondled him and often let him lie in his lap. And if he went out to dinner, he would bring back a titbit or two to give him when he ran to meet him on his return. The ass had, it is true, a good deal of work to do, carting or grinding the corn or carrying the burdens of the farm, and ere long he became very jealous, contrasting his own life of labor with the case and idleness of the lapdog. At last, one day, he broke his halter and frisking into the house. Just as his master sat down to dinner, he pranced and capered about, mimicking the frolics of the little favorites, upsetting the table and smashing the crockery with his clumsy efforts. Not content with that, he even tried to jump on his master's lap, as he had so often seen the dog allowed to do. At that, the servants, seeing the danger their master was in, belabored the silly ass with sticks and cudgels and drove him back to his stable half dead with his beating. Alas, he cried, all this I have brought on myself. Why could I not be satisfied with my natural and honorable position without wishing to imitate the ridiculous antics of that useless little Lapdog. The Fir Tree and the Bramble A fir tree was boasting to a bramble and said somewhat contemptuously, You poor creature, you are of no use whatever. Now, look at me. I am useful for all sorts of things, particularly when men build houses. They can't do without me then. But the bramble replied, Ah, that's all very well. But you wait till they come with axes and saws to cut you down, and then you'll wish you were a bramble and not a fir. Better poverty without a care than wealth with its obligations. The frog's, compliant, the frog's Complaint Against the Sun Once upon a time, the sun was about to take to himself a wife. The frogs in terror all raised their voices to the skies, and Jupiter, disturbed by the noise, asked them what they were croaking about. They replied, the sun is bad enough even while he is single, drying up our marshes with his heat as he does. But what will become of us if he marries and begets other sons? The Dog, the Cock, and the Fox A dog and a cock became great friends and agreed to travel together. At nightfall, the cock flew up into the branches of a tree to roost, while the dog curled himself, himself up inside the trunk, which was hollow. At break of day, the cock woke up and crew as usual. 
a fox heard, and wishing to make a breakfast of him, came and stood under the tree and begged him to come down. I should so like, said he, to make the acquaintance of one who has such a beautiful voice. The cock replied, Would you just wake my porter who sleeps at the foot of the tree? He'll open the door and let you in. The fox accordingly wrapped on the trunk when out rushed the dog and tore him in pieces. The Gnat and the Bull A gnat alighted to one of the horns of a bull and remained sitting there for a considerable time. When it had rested sufficiently and when it was about to fly away, it said to the bull, Do you mind if I go now? The bull merely raised his eyes and remarked without interest, It's all one to me. I didn't notice when you came, and I shan't know when you go away. We may often be of more consequence in our own eyes than in the eyes of our neighbors. Okay, I think that I will stop here. I hope that you have enjoyed this segment of Aesop's Fables. I'm your host, Randall Sanborn Fields. And this concludes another episode of Reading Brainbow, where reading is fundamental. And this is your brain on reading. Goodbye.